So Mina Trista um, is two words, Mina and Trist. Mina came from um, an Indian word meaning water, and Trist was Old English for um, a gathering place. So together, Mina Trista stood for a gathering place by the water. So a lot of people think that Minatrista is just a really beautiful place. We're in the heart of downtown. Um, a lot of folks come and use it as a park type setting. Um, our gardens are free and open to the public all year round. We invest quite a bit of money into providing an interesting and diverse set of garden spaces. So Minatrista is a 40 acre campus and we have experiences that are natural, we have historical experiences, as well as more what people would think of as traditional museum experiences. So you can come and um, hike in a six acre nature area, you can walk down the Minatrista boulevards and take in all the historic homes and architecture. We do behind the scenes tours, we have traveling exhibitions that we rent from a across the nation, as well as creating our own Minatrista original exhibitions using artifacts and archival materials that we have collected over the past 25 years from history, people, places around East Central Indiana, as well as Ball Family and Ball Corporation. We have four of the original Ball Brother homes that were built um, in the 1890s, early 1900s, and then we have um, a small stone cottage at the end of the boulevard that was built built for an aunt. The, uh, the Balls um, selected this um, site for their homes. Um, we're on the bluff above the White River and just a beautiful site. It's, it's no surprise that they were able to buy it. The uh, story goes that the uh, Ball family, um, when they, uh, sometime after they moved to Muncie, they uh, purchased the land here along the north um, bank of the White River. And they actually had a business in Buffalo, New York. Um, everybody just automatically thinks of Ball and everything associated with Ball as being the Ball canning jars, but that's not how they started. They started their company in 1880 in New York, uh, started making jars in 1884. Um, they had several fires. Uh, when you make glass, you have fires. Um, heard about the natural gas boom in East Central Indiana and came to this area to build a branch factory. In 1887, they started building a factory complex here, which opened in 1888. By that time, they were making the um, um, mason jars that they were so well known for later in life. So they saw this property and those who the uh, first couple that started to build started to build along this property and they just kept adding so they could literally stay together. The fact that all five brothers built their, or either built or moved into a home uh, next to each other is a really unique situation. It doesn't happen often. The homes standing are still a good indication of the Ball family and the Ball company and what they brought to Muncie. They were really a unique family, very strong family values. Originally there were five Ball mansions along Minatrista Boulevard and unfortunately Frank Seaball's home uh, burned down in 1967. Frank was the president of the company and he and his wife Elizabeth, uh, most commonly known as Bessie, owned the house where Minatrista now stands. They built it in 1894, uh, lived there with their five children and in February of 1967 uh, the house caught fire. It was quite a fire. I mean, the blaze could be seen for miles around. The, um, the response to it, well, it took everything that the community could offer and the surrounding communities as well. In the 80s, the decision was made to um, construct a more modern contemporary museum building with um, 
exhibit halls, meeting space, offices, and Minatrista opened its doors in 1988 um, as Minatrista Cultural Center at that point. Now we go by Minatrista because we're an incorporated 40-acre campus and um, we have all these different types of experiences. Well, we recently got the uh, Minatrista Boulevard designated as a national, um, as a historic uh, district on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, and um, there are eight contributing historic buildings uh, within the district boundaries. You can come down the street that runs right in front of those homes and there is the E.B. Ball Center, there is Maplewood, Oakhurst, the L.L. Ball Home, and then there's the Mary Lincoln Cottage at the end. Well, Lucius Ball and his wife, Sarah, lived in the yellow brick house. Um, Lucius was the oldest brother and kind of helped get his younger brothers established and then went to medical school when he was in his 30s. Lucius was the only one who didn't build a separate home. His um, framework home was actually here on the property when he purchased it. They had one daughter, Helen. Helen and Elizabeth were close friends just as Francis and Sarah were very good friends. Um, the girls were close in age, whereas a lot of the other cousins were older. Well, it's used for a variety of reasons, but I, uh, there were apartments in there, but also uh, for many years after it was first established, uh, WBST had their studios in there. And if you remember, in fact, he's still on TV, uh, Bob Ross painting his happy little trees, Bob painted his happy little trees in the Lucius Ball home for very many years. When George and Francis started working on their home, um, they just had a different aesthetic. So the GA Ball home is its original home. Um, it was the GA Ball family lived here. That was George Ball, Francis Ball, and their daughter, Elizabeth. And what's interesting about this home is it was lived in until the 80s. It was, it was said when it was first built, people were saying, well, they must have used all the money and can't afford to paint it. Well, it was varnished, and so you had this beautiful oak. But over the years, they did paint it several times. So when Minatrista um, was granted granted the property in the 1990s and a lot of renovations took place to the house, all of that old paint, which had really gotten dark and black, was removed and the beauty of the oak came back through. In the past 25 years, we have interpreted it or um, allowed visitors to come in and see it in pretty much its original fashion on the outside, but the inside has been kind of a mix of more contemporary furnishings as well as um, some of the historical objects. We've told the story of the family from the turn of the century to modern times. In the uh, late 1980s, um, the Ball family started looking at Oakhurst and how it could become uh, a part of this educational mission. Um, George and Francis Ball built this house, um, but their daughter Elizabeth um, was uh, uh, trained in botany and had a lifelong interest in plants and, and uh, landscaping and so forth. Um, the woods behind this house had gotten terribly overgrown and in the, those late 80s uh, they started um, thinning out the scrub trees and the weeds that had grown up in the woods and as soon as the sunlight started coming in, it was just fabulous because all these plantings that Elizabeth had planted maybe 50 years before started popping up all on their own. They'd been dormant all that time. So Oakhurst Gardens is the backyard garden of George, Francis, and Elizabeth Ball. 
It's one of my favorite gardens because it's kind of a historic backyard garden. It's roughly about six acres today. It was slightly smaller when the family lived there. They acquired properties over time. Today we maintain a lot of the feel of the space, so it has the same curvy lines, sweeps and masses of perennials, the arbor, and um, we try to use historically appropriate plants as much as possible. What's exciting about this space is that we are working to restore it structurally. It's in pretty good shape, but it needs a few updates. And then we are going to recreate the first floor to look like the 1920s um, using original furnishings, um, decorative arts, and then telling the story of that time period, about um, the turn of the century through the 20s. They just had an interest in what the company was doing with, with the canning jars and the, and the fruit jars. So using Francis's recipes, they created uh, what is now known as the Ball Blue Book, which is published almost every year here in the Oakhurst Kitchen. We take a lot of inspiration of what we do from all of the family, but especially our, our heart here in Oakhurst. I've not found any um, any story of how the the uh, name Nebusham came from or where it where it started, um, but it means bend in the river. Today and actually for quite some time now, it has been used by the the um, Ball State University Foundation belongs to the foundation as a. Um, continuing education center, a retreat, a community center, every a large number of things happen there. The first floor is still gorgeous and very much as it would have been when the family lived there. The second and third floors have been um, refurbished and refurnished to serve more with classroom space and meeting space and everything. But it's just an amazing facility. It's just wonderful and great programs happen there. William actually married Emma, I believe, in Buffalo, and then he brought her, a couple of years later, he brought her here to Muncie. Their home, Maplewood, is much easier. There was a grove of maple trees. William was um, secretary of the company and was also the salesman. Uh, he and Emma lived there with their son, William. Um, called it Maplewood because it's set in a grove of maple trees. Uh, it's a, um, a Greek revival house basically is, like I said, a, a mixture of styles, but basically a Greek revival. The property now though is owned by the um, Ball Brothers Foundation and it has been leased through different iterations of the company, um, currently now to Viralia as a guest house. It's, it's just a beautiful home. The Ball family was very influential in this area, and not just because of a big corporation, but they cared about their community and the values that they held as an entire family, that idea of moving to a community, living in a community, living near your family, contributing back to the community, valuing education, valuing small business, valuing the health and well-being of the community, I think is something we can all learn from and hope to, on some scale, give back to our communities. <laughs>